So everybody, welcome to the CBS Radio Culinary Kitchen. All right, I'm Jay from the Jay Show. Yeah. Thanks for coming. This is my producer Gabe. Gabe right Ramirez. Here. Nice to see you guys. And this is Anne Marino. Hey. Uh, and usually we have a lot of food and edible things here today, but this is even better. We've got drinks. Hey. Yeah. We got drinks, okay? Cool. So uh, we're talking about a couple things here. We've got rum. We've got the Midwest Rum Fest to speak about, and we have also your history and what you your connection to rum and these brands and your story. So let's just get into it right now. Absolutely. All right. So Anne, welcome. Thank you. Um, Thank I'm you reading here that you started. Uh, bartending at the age of 18. Now, does anyone, does that sound weird to anybody? <laughs> I did, I started in Madison, Wisconsin, where I believe if you're able to walk, you're able to bartend. Ah, I see. So, yeah, We're the wrong so that's, city. That's, <laughs> that's when I started, and I, I was going to University of Wisconsin and needed a job to kind of help me through, and that's what I did. Now, Wisconsin, beer, that makes sense. Right. Yes. But, but, yes. but you and rum, now, what's that, how does that transition happen? You know, I actually was, you know, was definitely beer girl for a very long time, okay. shot and beer. Uh, then whiskey, and then I just kind of went into rum. I mean, it kind of—it's a natural progression, I believe, okay. to go into rum. Now you told me you were a part of a, a cane camp. Yes. In my nice island of Puerto Rico. Nice. Yes. Right. Tell me about that. Yes. What was that like? So cane camp is a, a production that uh, Don Q puts on. So we basically sponsor about 50 bartenders to go down to Puerto Rico and have an immersion experience out there. Very so cool. we really learned about making rum, making beer, coffee. Uh, all that great stuff, and we had a huge party at the castle, and we we just had an amazing time. And I didn't work for the company yet. That's actually how I met the family that is the Cedes family, which makes Don Q. Very, Very cool. cool. Now, rum is a special drink because, uh, like, so many people know vodka is derived from was it uh, potatoes, potatoes or, or wheat, wheat or, or things or, like mm -hmm. that. Rum is derived mostly from sugars, correct? Yeah, molasses sure, and stuff like mm -hmm. that, cane. And uh, what makes Don Q so special? Uh, or distinct amongst the, the world of rums? So I believe in general the Puerto Rican rums, as you can attest to, are, are special because they all have to be aged. So we do have a white rum, a clear rum, that we also we age, and we age it for at least a year. And that's really special. And then you come to these products, and we have these aged products here. And when you think about it, you think when you think aged spirits, you think whiskey, you think brandy, right. cognac, things like that. Right. Well, we're aging things in the exact same way. We have, we have rums here that are three to eight years old. We have a 10-year-old single barrel rum. Uh, we have one with a Solera system that's been around for over 60 years. Wow. So there, I mean, it's, it's, and it's so special because it gives it that, this, I think the sugar cane just gives a little bit more smoothness yeah, yeah. than you got. Yeah, you're talking to rum guys, as you yes. said, Puerto Rico, Jamaica. Yeah, We are rum guys. Rum. We know rum. We love yes. rum. So this couldn't be a, a better demonstration. Now, Jay. <laughs> this is lunch. <laughs> this is lunch. Jay, That's what this now, is. Now, there's, there's clear rums, there's dark rums. Yeah. Which, which I'm a dark prefer? rum guy. So really? I love big body flavored rums, you know, molasses, just though that real spicy you know, aged taste. I love dark yeah. rums. So these dark mm -hmm. rums in front of us look great. No, I didn't see a, I didn't see a donku cristal mm -hmm. so or a, li or a limon. Oh. Well, we want we do have some flavored ones okay. as well. We do have a coconut flavor and a limon, and those are also aged. We have to age anything that we say Puerto Rican rum on. We have to age it. So we do, and it gives it that full body feel to it, that mouth feel that you don't get from an unaged rum. Fantastic. So what happens at Midwest Rum Fest? Midwest Rum Fest is really cool because you have a whole bunch of different rums from all around the world and a whole bunch of people that love rum. You guys love so, rum out here? Anybody, yeah. any I mean, rum yeah, got yeah, it, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, good, good. Yeah. You're amongst friends, good. Yeah, so it's really interesting because you can talk to different people. I mean, rum comes from so many different places. There's actually a, uh, a rule out there that basically says that rum needs to taste like rum. Okay. So pretty, you Seems know. simple enough. A little, yeah, a little simple, yeah. but it can, you know, there's such differentiating flavors between rums. And that's really cool to be able to see them all together at one time. Has it been like a resurgent of rum in America? Like, is it is it, is it like the thing now? Rum? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you're seeing tiki bars pop up for sure. Yeah, we're in style. Yeah. Lost yeah. 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 Finally. 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 Nice. Um, so obviously you have those, and then you have you know the kind of the, the cocktail that we're going to show you is is using rum uh, in kind of a different way. So okay. it says it doesn't all have to be tiki. It can also go a different way as well. All right. Well, let's just get into it. Go into Shall it? we? Well, do we have any questions from the audience first? I mean, anybody that wants to ask a question in regards to the rum. Um, we got a question in front here. Want to take a second? I mean, R Midwest Rum Fest. Where where does it take place at? Um, so we're doing it at Logan Auditorium. Okay. And I'm sorry. Yes, Logan Auditorium. Mm. And uh, it's going to be on April 8th, which is a Saturday. Okay. So most people are off on Saturdays, right? You guys can it's come out, and hang out. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, it's going to be at. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you go ahead. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was just curious about the difference between dark rum and black rum. Hmm. 
Um, it can be a, a, a lot of different things. Um, with a black rum, sometimes you're adding some blackstrap molasses to it, or it's made from the blackstrap molasses, um, or how old it is. It can, it can be a whole bunch of different things. But yeah, normally it'll be, it'll be the addition of, of some blackstrap to it. Mm -hmm. Now my grandfather, he was always like a beer and a shot guy. Mm. That was his thing, rum yes. of choice. So, so when you have your, your shot of rum, how many shots do we put in a drink typically? What is it that? Well, it depends. So one of the cocktails we'll be making, we're putting two ounces, but we're putting two different types of rum in there. Okay, so, so that's okay. That's not like a sin. No, not at all. Putting the dark and the light together? No, okay. you can do that, no problem. It's, there's really no sin, you know this. Well, I'm excited. You're, as long as you're drinking rum, we're happy. <laughs> okay. That's, we're very happy about that. <laughs> Jungle juice. <Happy. laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Any more yeah. questions? Any more questions in there? So far, so good. All right, good. Cool. Well, it's, Want to get started? Let's get to work. Okay, let's Shit. try some cocktails here. All right, so the first one I'm going to do is called a spiced old fashioned. Spiced. Okay, wait. Yes. Now we're going back to the question part. Old fashioned, I'm used to whiskey. How, mm -hmm. how, what is it? The, how, how is it different? How are we making it with rum? Or why, how is it still called an old fashioned if we're making it with well, rum? Well, that's kind of where we're going back to where the, the aged spirits as a category okay. and mm -hmm. really saying we're aging at the same time. Every distiller will tell you that barrel really does a lot of work. Mm. I mean, this again, this one's sitting in the barrel for 10 years. Yeah. This is sitting three to eight years. This one's sitting for three years. That barrel does a ton of work. So to kind of just say that they're all different because they're derived from something different, uh, it doesn't really work. So okay. we thought, let's use this as you would use whiskey. Okay. You know, let's, let's, let's speak whiskey, spe whiskey drinker's language and make it old fashioned. I like it. Now I've been yeah. drinking a lot of old fashions lately. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to try this one. Yes. Something so this about one, the uh, oranges and, and your berries that you're putting in. Right? <laughs> yeah, these are, so this is what we call a split base. Okay. So when you're going to do a split base, you're going to split the base spirit between this one and this one. Okay. So it's pretty easy. So this fancy contraption that you're pouring it in, what is this called? This one, this is a mixing glass. And that's what, I've seen, I've seen most cocktail bars, they have that. Yeah, What's yeah, the yeah the, fancy, the fancy spoon and everything. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the theory behind it, and this is, there's a couple exceptions that prove the rule. But the theory behind it is that if there's no acid in it, so if there's no lemon juice, lime juice, anything like that, okay. you want to stir it. Because you don't want it, when, if there's so much alcohol in something that, like this that doesn't have that acidity to kind of break it down, we, you're going to want to stir it so okay. it doesn't just completely water down. No acid, stir it. Yeah. Hmm. And then if there's acid in it, Shake it Shake up. Shake it up. Okay, Shake here's another up. thing I got a big question about bitters. Okay. You hear people talk about it all the time. What, yeah. what are bitters? Yeah. I like to say bitters are to cocktails like salt is to meat. Okay. So it doesn't always give flavor to something. Okay. But it lets the natural flavors of the spirit that it's with come out. So it kind of potentiates the, the, exactly. uh, whoa. the flavor. Yeah. Whoa. Exactly. It's a good word. <laughs> okay. I like that. I'm going to use that word. I'm going to use that word, <laughs> <laughs> use that word okay. from now on. Yeah, right. All right. So we're going to grab some ice from over here. Sure. Now, I've always been told to pour the alcohol over the ice. So that well, way it can get cold. So we're doing the opposite. So if you think about it, if you think about it, we had to stop and talk for a little while, okay. right? Yeah. And sometimes in the bar or sometimes at home, you've run out of something. So when you run out of something, you have to leave. And if you've done it all over the ice already, that ice uh, is just going to melt and melt and melt and melt. OK. And so since you don't want that, because it does change the composition of the drink, it. right? Yeah, the, it's really the molecular composition of it does okay. change. Science. Not that I have a drink or two. And normally I would be putting in sugar into this, into an old fashioned. That's how you normally would do it. The reason I'm not doing that is because we have that spiced rum in there. Mm -hmm. Now we don't add any, we don't add any sugar to our spiced rum. We don't add, add any sugar to any of these rums that you're seeing here right now. But there's some tamarind, there's some fruit, there's things Ooh. that are giving it natural sugar. So because of that, we want to make sure that we're not adding too much sugar. You want to you want to taste the flavor. You guys sure. want to taste the rum, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Cool. yes. So I'm gonna go like this. So she lightly stirred it. Yeah, not just a little bit of much. stirring there. Oh, that, that color is beautiful. It's beautiful, right? Yeah, it's like an amber. It's nice. And then I'm gonna reach right over here. Grab an orange. Oh, this is my favorite Ooh, part. Thank you very much. This is when you're maximizing the use of an orange. It's right very, here. very true. <laughs> All right. Orange peel. So, and you can already smell it. You guys in the first row might even be able to smell that orange. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah, that's good stuff. It goes right there. So then, you want to take these, the oils, and just put the oils right over the is top Is that what there. it is? The yeah. oils that they're releasing Yeah, you can there? see it. 
I really thought it was just a garnish. Yeah, that's yeah. actually what you're smelling. You can see it, and you can see if you look in the light, you can actually see those little oh, wow. yeah, oil right. marks, right? Oh, yeah. Check that out. Oil yeah. and water don't mix. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's just something that's really nice to have there. And then these, these cherries. Cherries. These are cherries. These okay. are cherries. These are brandy soaked cherries. Brandy soaked cherries. And oh man. Just that little bit there. Now, Jay, you want to arm wrestle for this one? Or what do you want to do? <laughs> or? I've been lifting, buddy, so I don't know if you want to do that. There's a lot well, to share there. there. No, 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 no. By all means. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> now, one more time, man. Tell us the two uh, rums that you use to make this drink. So I use the Danku and Yeho. Okay. Uh, which is aged three to eight years and then the Oak Barrel Spiced, which is a brand new product. It just came into Chicago market, I think about a month ago. Oh, really? So it's brand new. It's been in Puerto Rico for a little while just because they get everything good first. Um, but it's, it's uh, Oak Barrel Spiced, so it's been aged for about three years. And then we add some some baking spices, basically vanilla, tamarind, cinnamon, nutmeg. Okay, like frat that. house chug or date sip? <laughs> I, I, I mean, is there a difference? I'm capable of both, but I just, I just, I just, I just want to be clear on what we're doing here. This is a good question, though, because you're supposed to, from what I've heard, two sips, right? Yeah, you want to at least taste it twice. Uh, double taste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the theory behind that is that the first taste you kind of get of all the other flavors out of your yeah. mouth, and then the second taste you can this actually is, taste what it is. Pass it to the right. There we go. This is Thank you for having, I've been no waiting for this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very smooth, very smooth, very mm -hmm. smooth. Um, you know, a lot of people, when you say rum to, rum to them, they go, oh my gosh, you're gonna get me wasted. Mm. But the truth is, drinking that, you'd probably drink it uh, really slowly and get a slow kind of mm -hmm. whatever it is because it's very smooth. Well, you, know? you can't even taste how strong it is. It's a sipping drink. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely uh, a sipping yeah. drink. And like it's 80 proof rum and 90 proof rum. Well, so. Uh, most everything we do is 80 proof, but we, mm. we had the 90 proof. Wait, the, I Wait the fact that I couldn't tell six, am I putting myself out there? No, oh, but yeah, that's it's 80 proof. Man. That's crazy. <laughs> so, so, question okay. about, about Don Ku also. Mm -hmm. Now, they are one of the only uh, rums that are owned by a Puerto Rican family still, is that yes, correct? Yes. Now, because there's others on the island, not necessarily mm -hmm. run by them. So that's the distinct thing about uh, Don Ku, which is very cool. It is. It's very Jay. cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the Cereas family that owns it is, is amazing. They've, they've been doing this for 152 years, oh, wow. so they know what they're doing. They and they yeah. Well, we're ready for drink number two. All right. Excited. All right. Now, we're making the pina you. colada, correct? The pina colada. What's the history behind yeah. the pina colada? So most people have heard of pina coladas before, sure. right? Probably had one or two or 14. Yes, yeah, the drink, <laughs> it's it's the, drink the bartender hates to make for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Any bartenders well, there? Anyone ever bartend? Yeah. The cool uh, thing is, is that we don't have to put it in a blender. Okay. So we're going to put it over some crushed ice instead. So the cool thing about um, the, the pina colada is that it was actually invented in Puerto Rico in 1954, on August 15th, if you want to be exact about it. And uh, it was Monchito Moreto who, uh, who invented it at the Caribe Hilton in Puerto Rico using Don Q Gold hey, Drum. Hey, look at that. And there, there is, you can look back, there's history of it, there, there's proof. Uh, they actually made it, I believe, in 1978. The government made it the official drink of Puerto Rico, the That's pina colada. That's mm -hmm. And then in 86. The governor of Puerto Rico uh, gave Moreto a, a plaque saying, you did this, you, you invented it at the Caribe Hilton. And I've been to the Caribe Hilton. If you ever have a chance to go, go and drink pina coladas. They're amazing. <laughs> I need to bring you to some of my family parties because <laughs> I have, you know, there's a bunch of Latinos, whether it's Colombian, Cuban, and they all try to lay came, they claim to the, to the pina, pina colada. colada. <laughs> you know? yes, so they I bring do. you, had a lot of good information there. Oh, she's going to get kicked out immediately. Oh, you don't want her there. Right. It's like salsa, the pina yeah. colada. Everybody's trying to steal it. It's so. true. I am going to get you some paperwork. Good. I do yeah. too. And then I will uh, come and hang out with your family. Wait, is that lotion? <laughs> what is going on here? So this is cream of coconut. This is Real ingredients. You'll also see Real ingredients at Rumfest. Uh, they're a great company. We were talking earlier about, so cream of coconut, I don't know if you've ever had, you know, the little can of it. Sure, sure. It's wonderful and delicious. delicious. It goes bad very quickly. <laughs> this is shelf stable, so you don't actually have to worry about that. Okay. Delicious, delicious tasting and shelf stable. And so for the home bartender, even for the professional bartender, but for the home bartender that's not using a ton of this every single day, it'll it'll stay. I gotta it'll tell you, the coconut is so. in right now. Have you guys yes. noticed coconut, coconuts everywhere? Everywhere. Coconut oil and coconut water, and everyone's mm -hmm. using coconut to cook and mm -hmm. moisturize their hands with. That's it's very true. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. Yeah. I mean, if you just take a smell of it, you'll, you'll right, understand why. Right, right. So yeah, we'll just use. Wow, that looks wow. 
Looks like lotion. So equal it part does. equal part coconut. Uh, so two ounces of the Don Q and okay. then an ounce of the coconut. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do that. It also mixes up really, really well. So some of that, it's really hard because it, you know, it'll be in the can and it'll separate. And again, that's those are good things. It's not bad things. It means you know, um, <laughs> you're getting something tasty. Yeah. But. And then, and then what do we have here? So this is just pineapple juice. Oh. Just regular old <laughs> pineapple juice. Fancy Which? bottle, <laughs> looks, looks nice. <laughs> I like this. You I'm know, in. I thought I thought I'd fancy it up a little bit. So grab a little ice here, and like I said, you don't have to put it in a blender if you don't want to. You can, and it's delicious and wonderful. But you don't really have to. But I'd recommend not shaking it too much. Okay, because I, I do want to see your technique on shaking. Uh, I've seen uh, many. Uh. I'm excited <laughs> for this one. All right, we can do that. So, I'm gonna make sure the seal is tight, because if not, bad things happen. Right, right. <laughs> don't I catch now? No, I don't. Want to make it. Okay. <laughs> Just shake it up a little bit here. Like it. And then. That hit at the, at the end is key. Oh, that's great, yeah. I can't yeah, tell you how many minutes I've spent trying to get twist. something loose <laughs> and trying to get it, hit it. There's a, little, there's a little trick to it, if you want to know the trick to it. Oh, there is a trick to it? There is. Oh, I thought the trick was just to hit it. <laughs> okay. You want to hit it exactly where. See how it makes that V right there? Okay. Yeah, it makes that V. Oh, okay, where the two actually yeah, check it out. Oh, and then it'll pop right it out. There. Okay. Right Look at that. It'll pop right out. I'm gonna fill this up with some crushed ice over here. It smells good. We hand crushed this before the segment. We did. Let's see that. Now, pina colada is my favorite drink, Jay, when I go on vacation. You know, there's nothing like somebody bringing you a drink while you're just sitting there. A pina colada. In the coconut? Yeah. Is that something? I've, oh, in the, in the pineapple, I've had it in as well. They'll, oh. they'll pineapple in Jamaica. You are fancier yeah. than I am. Yeah. Just different fancy <laughs> pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> Go gut it and put it in that too. All right, so here we go. Okay. Oh man, it smells so good. Right? That's it smells yeah, that so a... good. Do we get to put one of these there colorful straws in there? Because I feel like. We're gonna put a colorful straw, but first. Oh. Put oh, some oh, pineapple geez. leaves in there. Let's see. And then, what color do you want? You want pink, right? Of course. Why, what, okay. else, what else would I want? <laughs> That's what I figured. Me. All right, Jay, you went first last time. Okay. You can have a different color straw on everything. I, I call green. You call green? Yeah. Can you do it at the same time? Do I do, I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a fight today. I'm not, I'm not sharing the drinks with him today. But I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to apologize. It's going to take me time. Oh, wow. It's oh, good. Wow. Good. Right. Three ingredients. The best drinks are the ones that you don't know that there's alcohol inside of them. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, yeah, I said yeah. that right. <laughs> and you're like, this doesn't taste like anything. Mm -hmm. Three later, you're having a great time. Oh, wow. So rich. Yeah. It does have a different uh, taste uh, than something that's blended. The coconut adds a different flavor to it. It's mm -hmm. definitely uh, creamier, but, but, but smooth at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah, very rich. Oh, well, so tell us. A little us, easier to drink, too. Definitely. Well, we appreciate you making these two right here. Tell us a little bit more about, about Midwest Fest. It, uh, Saturday, uh, April 8th, Saturday, at the April Logan Arts Harbor Theater. Mm -hmm. They said it's going to be broken up into two parts? There is. There's two different parts. So basically, the first part is going to be a from noon until 1, and that's really service industry focused. So okay. kind of a good way for people to network, that are, you know, run bars, work in bars, serve, anything like that, some brand people as well. Kind of a small, intimate gathering. And then, and actually at the same time, we will be running a cocktail competition oh, wow. um, that is with the United States Bartenders Guild, and we're doing a rum colada competition. It's the best rum colada. Um, <laughs> and then the second one's really open to anyone. Okay. It's really just, again, time to the, the rum aficionado tasting. So okay. you just get to go from country to country, basically, drinking all the different rums. Is this your favorite drink? You know, I'm gonna go with the old fashioned. The old fashioned. Yeah, I am. I'm I'm a purist. Okay. I Just like my I like my spirit to taste like like it's home. Oh yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm from here, but yeah, yes, that's where I learned how to drink was Wisconsin. It's true. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, oh man. Fantastic. We appreciate you coming by. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, is there any other questions uh, from the audience? I mean, you guys have had an opportunity to see these drinks uh, made. Uh, anyone have anything? Any questions maybe about the event or uh, the rum that we've uh, that we've used here today? So what do you, so your favorite though, you said is the spiced, right? Well, it's a nice old fashioned probably. I mean, I'm gonna go with one of the, probably this one is my favorite. This is a really interesting one. This one is our single barrel. So uh, it was just kind of an experiment in 2005. And we said, hey, what'll happen if we just do one batch? Don't blend anything, just put it all in the back of a warehouse and see what happens. And this is what happened. And this one really is what shows that showcases the aged spirits as a category. And you how long did they have it back there? 
Ten years. Ten years. As well. Ten years. See, my question with that is because you see some something that's aged for five years, something that's aged for ten years has the same alcohol content, forty percent mm -hmm. alcohol by volume. Right. So the the aging, the difference in that is just purely flavor. Add water. So it, well, to get it down, is you would add water. But yeah, that's it's it's really just the aging process and where you are. We always say if you're going to be an angel, you know, they talk about the angel share mm -hmm. and the the evaporation from all the the wood barrels and the porousness of it. I always say, well, if you're going to be an angel, be an angel in Puerto Rico, because you will drink hey. a ton of rum. I love this. Um, I, I love you. <laughs> I love you, by the way. Well, it's all, you know, it's, it's so warm there that it's constant evaporation. You know, yeah. in, in Kentucky, it's back and forth and back and forth. Here, it's just constant evaporation. So, yeah. um, so you'll really get that, the wood notes off of it and the flavor off of it. Awesome. But yeah. Great. Oh, great. Well, uh, one more round. Of, uh, we have a question, yeah? Go ahead. How much are tickets for the Rum Festival? Um, tickets for the Rum Festival, I believe the first session is 35 and the second session is 70, I believe. Please do not quote me on that. No, but that includes all my rum, though, right? It that includes all your okay, rum. Okay, okay, I it was going to say. It includes all your rum, and you have, you know, in the second session, you have four and a half hours of rum drinking to hey, do. Hey, let me ask you a novice question. You, you go to these rum festivals, I mean, is there a room for, like, all the people that are just getting hammered, like, and don't realize what's going on? Yeah. Like, well, it is, is something that we do have to be very careful yeah, about. Yeah, of course Something, yes, yeah, so sure. <laughs> sure. Is that part of the, um, uh, the okay. We do very, we do very small portions. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there's actually the specific pour spouts that we use to sure. make sure that it doesn't go over a quarter of an ounce, which, you know, doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have all these things, mm. all these different tables, it's a lot of rum. Sure. So... Uh, we also we monitor people and make sure that that everybody's having a good time. We have a little little bite to eat, something like that. Maybe a couple a couple of bottles of water, and then. I know what you mean though. You're like bacon fest, tum yake. That's right. the worst thing to happen. Yeah, you know, rum fest. fest yes. It's like a totally different. Blackout. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I, love it. I love it. I love it. Very cool. Yes. Well, well it's, been, it's been educational and yes. very tasty. Thank you so and much. And very fragrant. All right. So, Anne Morel, make some uh, yeah. noise. Yeah. Don't forget about the Midwest Rum Fest. What's happening? Uh, let me make sure I get the it's right. It's uh, the eighth of April, eighth, eighth Saturday of April. at the Logan, Logan, Logan Square, Square Theater. Auditorium. Mm -hmm. Logan right. Square Auditorium. Auditorium. I lived, I born and raised there. I, I live yeah. up next to the Eagle. That's right there. That's my place. Right All right. right there. Well, thank you so much for coming to the uh, Culinary Kitchen, yes. guys. Hashtag Chicago Kitchen for all social media. Any pictures? Any uh, social media that you do? Hashtag Chicago Kitchen. So we can keep it together and have them look good together. All right. So thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is the CBS Culinary Kitchen. That was awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. Very, very good.